You may wonder where we're at, but it's no secret, we're down at Cross and Ratangan in Kildare. And the reason we come down here is because of this beauty of a machine beside us. We first seen this when we went out and visited Michael Hoy, and we seen that he was running one of the prototype machines that was designed by Cross Engineering, and so much so, and they're so impressed with it that Country Crest is actually, they're not for letting it go, they're holding on to it. The designer here, as Gary Cross himself, was done for his thesis in his mechanical engineering degree. You know, most people design something that would be in a desk or something small, this is what Gary Cross from the Cross family designed and from what I have gathered being here already, this part of the Ireland, particularly this town, has a real historical interest in uh, designing and workshop and metal folding and woodwork, uh, particularly at the local school is one of the very few left in Ireland that still offers this and that, that you must go through these types of courses. So it's, it really is in this part of the world, in the blood I think it's fair to say. Gary's only 22 years of age and we're just going to speak to him and ask him what it's like to design something from start to finish, to actually see it through and to have it here in the flesh. We're very impressed with Cross so far. There's only one negative thing I have to say is they don't have a Scania. But other than that, we'll let them away with that. <laughs> so we're going to get Gary to come right round the bin now and give us a wee talk round his designs. I'm Gary Cross yes. from Ratangan in County Kildare. Um, went to school here, born and raised here. Then I went on to do my bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering in DIT Bolton Street. The chase bin then was part of my final year project then so I didn't want to do anything too small or I wanted to do something to impress. You could, <laughs> sure, surely you could have made something a bit bigger like. I tried but they wouldn't <laughs> let me. <laughs> and how many bins have you produced you know to date? We've only two out to date. There are two prototype bins. Now the two customers to have them are extremely satisfied with the bins obviously. We hope to test our bins completely in Ireland before we ever go out to a foreign market. Like we have had inquiries from foreign markets. We've had one inquiry from Germany, another one from Russia, and another one from Australia so far. But we don't want to sell them until they're proven and tested in Ireland first. Well, I mean, is it, is, is it fair enough for me to say this bin isn't really designed with Ireland in mind? No, exactly. Uh, you know, you are looking to that bigger market, but, but you're, you're fortunate that you've got some customers here that can't do the testing. And yeah, like probably four or five big operators in Ireland that could justify a bin like this. But after that, the market's very limited. After that, it's all European or on far as Russia and all the bigger players. Describe to me the feeling of no one or seeing that heading to the workshop for the first time, the, the, the first, or, or the nerves, were you excited or how did you feel? I was still in college see, when this all started. So I was doing about 30 hours a week in college. And I was coming home here and I was doing about 30 to another 40 hours as well on top of that. So it was a hectic week to say the least. I was coming home from college in the afternoons and it'd be late, dark in the middle of winter. And I'd go out to the workshop to see how the build was coming along. And the first thing I thought, did I make a mistake in my calculation? because this shop's too big. <laughs> it looks a lot bigger in real life than it does on the computer screen. <laughs> so that and, was my first thought when I seen it. And when you, you know, as it, as it came together, and the axles got on and it took shape, and then I take it, obviously once it got painted, then you, that's when you, is that the realization when you see it painted with your feeling. name on it? Well, where do you go to design something to top this? I don't know, we'll, we'll come up with something surely. Ah, uh, he's not for you, what is the old secret? Uh, I'm give him a kick. So right, to the machine itself, I know nothing about grain, so just assume, you know, can you talk us through any any parts of the build, what, what we're looking at? Very simple, you have your control panel here, it's split into your front bin, your rear bin, and then into your services. So your services are like so your steering axle, your beacons, your lights. So everything is controlled from the cab of your tractor. So front bin, auger in, auger out, so that's... Just folding in and out your auger. Right. And you have your clutch engage, clutch, clutch disengage. So what you can actually do with this bin, you can stop and start each auger individually, or else run them both at the same time. Yes, yeah, she's running too, yeah. You floor, floor up, floor, floor down. down. So we have a special type of floor in our bin. It's not like an open door floor, which you see in a lot of the bigger bins because fertilizer won't actually flow through them, it bridges across the opening. Our floor lifts vertically straight up and it ends up with a clean sweep off the walls of the bin down into the floor auger. Because that is something I was going to come to. 
so she, she's actually really cleaning out the fertilizers. So there's no fertilizer really would be ending up lying in the. No, no. Because you know what that. Yeah, yeah. That was fertilizer and metal. Yeah, <laughs> don't mix. And that was one of the main things in design is not to have a flat surface in there. Everything has to be sloped. So we even want to just put a simple bracket inside. It also had to have a plate coming off it just to have a slope on it, so that everything would run off it and wouldn't sit on a bracket. Because that would that I that destroy it, rust it, fertilizer wherever it sits. And how long? How you mean you would have no time there to you? Genuinely, you would have no time there to then say the bin would be rotten yeah. if it was sitting level. And that's something we need to make sure that people understand because people would be weary, wouldn't they? People would be weary of putting fertilizer into a bin that, like that. Uh, uh, exactly. But now they know that the fertilizer is not going to lie yeah. there. So so okay, floor up, floor down. Then you have your spout rotation, so you can actually rotate your spout to direct the flow of the grain. You get about a metre of a troy either side down into your Arctic trailer. It's just a little extra you can kind of add to it. Then we go on to our hatch open, hatch close. So when you're finished for the day, whether it's sowing the field or else you're collecting from the combine for the day, you open up your hatches in the bottom of your bin and you drive around the headland with your, auger run, your floor auger running. And what that does is it gets any last bit that's left in the bin, cleans it out onto the ground. So your bin is spotless going back into the yard. Well, you see, that's very important because when you're sowing for farmers, you're a contractor, you just take a pile of fertilizer and a pile of seed and never take any back to them. Oh, I used it all, mate. Even though you had to dump it in the hedge, he doesn't need to know. <laughs> that's that's uh, yeah. See, drivers are going to love you. <laughs> we got all that seed on her. Perfect. I'm the best sower man you ever did see. Right. So you have that. And that's basically the same front bin, yeah. rear bin, and then oh, services. Services, so that's your steering lock and unlock. So on the back, you have a, what they call a, a drag steering on the back, or a floating steering. Mm -hmm. So when you're going around the corner, it'll just follow you around, and it just means it won't drag the wheels as much. And then you lock it when you're reversing back. Mm -hmm. So, oh, unlock. Yeah, and then you have all your, after this then it's all your beacons, beacons and your spotlights. spotlights. Auger spotlight, rear spotlight. That all, is quite simple. All the extras. That is quite simple. Like, we don't want to make it complicated with touch screen display, you're going in and out. So what's all this then? So if something happens with electronics. Manual. You have a manual override. If we can't get parts out to you within the day or two, if there's something wrong, usually we are out with, in a day or two with parts. But if not, the bin still is now of operation. You still have your manual override on all your valves, all you your just, hydraulic you operations. You just have to come out here and do it. Exactly. And then you have your remote control as well. So when you're filling your drill, what you can actually do is you stand up on top of your drill. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> right. You, you get down. You park your drill and underneath the the augers. You then get down out of your tractor that's in front of the drill and you hop up into the tractor in front of the chaser bin. You start up the PTO. Then you get down out of that tractor with the PTO running and you get up on top of the drill. And then from the top of the drill, it's all remote control to stop and start the augers. So the main thing about this bin, and it was probably the one's hardest design challenges, was to have the augers all PTO driven. So we were going down the route of putting hydraulically driven augers on it. But the biggest problem with hydraulics is you either sacrifice power to get speed, or you sacrifice uh, speed to get power. You can't get both out of them. For a PTO, it's very simple to get both out of it. So we have clutches down on the bottom of the bin, and they can bring in and out the, the augers independently or as together. So when you're in the harvest, you'll have your clutches in, and you won't dis disconnect your clutches for the whole harvest. They'll be locked in. So you'll have both augers running at the same time to unload into the lorry. So it will unload 35 tonne of grain in about three and a half minutes. So it's about 10 tonne a minute. Then when it comes to the sowing period, well then you'll, That's phenomenal. you'll be all on the clutches then. So you'll only ever have one auger running at a time. So if you want some fertilizer, you put in some fertilizer. For all the complications in the design of deciding whether to go to the PTO driven or looking at hydraulic driven, we've ended up with a remote control, which is literally front bin, rear bin, <laughs> one, three, five, seven, clutch in, clutch out, floor open, floor close for both your bins. Yeah. So all your complications are still there we go, press a button, it's like ringing home. Yeah. So you don't want any complicating for the end, end user, like that's the most important part have to make it simple. <laughs> Axles, tyres, what are you sending them out on or is there a choice or, or is this pretty much the standard or what, what are you? Well we go just top of the range, 
just standard so that there's no extras everyone gets top of the range spin then with see the biggest thing about a chase spin compared to a trailer is is reducing your soil compaction in the field so that so these wheels road legal but they're only rated to a very low speed where in a trailer you want to be doing the 50k where they're only at the 30k mark so we have 800 wide wheels on it just to spread the weight of it tri-axle all on air suspension and air brakes all so air suspension all air suspension so it'll float along any of the curves of the ground or you won't have more pressure on one wheel compared to the other it'll be even distributed and axles what axles do you uh, use we're using a granning axle on these they're a local manufacturer of axles. They'll be one of the main brands we use now. Very good. You know. So 800, 45 by 26 and a half. The biggest wheels you can get without going taller. Three of them. <laughs> and she's rear axle steer, so she's a floating rear axle. Yeah, so she'll just trail around, after, around the corners after it. She's very, very smooth, very easy, on, you know, just like, just like a lorry. Exactly. It's full commercial spec axles that are under them. They're not agricultural spec axles. We use the same ones and a lot of our bigger road going equipment there. So the reason right. your road speed's limited to 30 is purely because of the load rating on the tyre? Exactly. If you reduce the weight on the wheel, well then you have a higher speed. Of course. What's this for? So when it comes to filling the drill, you replace your, sp your spout up in the top of your augers with this attachment here. Then you have your pipe here. Now that can be cut to whatever length, depending on your height of your drill. So then you clip that onto the end of it and you have no splashing of seed or fertilizer so when you're sowing your Straight down into your drill. Yeah, the operator just holds the end of the, there's a handle on the end of the pipe and he just holds the end of the pipe. And uses his remote And uses the remote control with the other hand. And then when it comes to folding in your augers, there was a problem. When you fold in your orgs and you're parking up for the night, you have your rollover cover which will stop moisture getting into your fertilizer. But nothing will stop rain from blowing down the spout once it's folded over. So the, when you fold over that, it just has a mechanical linkage onto the cover. When she goes down, that comes over and just seals up the entire bin. So this is the famous gold medal that uh, this chaser bin was awarded at the Plowing Championships uh, 2016. So I think it's a remarkable achievement for a 22-year-old lad to start this project 18 months ago, see it right through the achievement and be awarded this year at the age of 22, I've got that right. Yeah. You know, and all I can say on that one is as a massive congratulations from the grassman.